we are back in Maya first in the hypersheet we are going to add AI a standard surface so Arnold comes with a handful of presets and there is also one preset for skin we can use that preset but we need to change some of the values later first Let's add the albedo map that we have painted in ZBrush and exported. So I added all the maps inside uh, the source images folder. This is the folder that you need to have all the, all the texture that you want to use specifically for your scene. You need to have it inside this source images folder. Okay, let, let's add that map and let's connect that map to the subsurface color. For the subsurface type, I'm using random work version 2, which is the most recent edition of subsurface for Arnold. You can try other types to see the difference. This Maybe there's not much difference between them. Now, let's just assign this material to the model. To light the scene, I usually use just a single area light. Let's just add one area light from the Arnold toolbar menu. So let's move it in front of the in front of the character's face. And I scale it roughly twice the scale of the model. So this would be size of the light. Let's also add a second perspective camera. So we're going to use this second camera specifically for rendering. So each time we move around, around the scene, we don't have to move back to render the character. Just like to Arnold render view to this camera. Okay, as you can see, the scene looks very dark and we need to increase the light intensity. So let's do that. Let's also, let's also go to render settings and change the image size to have a vertical orientation, which is suitable for portraits. Also, it's clear that subsurface scattering is too high. We have to lower the scale to around 10%. It might change based on the scale of your character, but here, somewhere around 10 to 12% is enough. Now, so we added the material to the model, but we haven't made the material for the hair. The hair is just default model, my material. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a standard hair material for Arnold. So the hair material is much more simple compared to, to, the, to the skin material. Here we have an attribute called melanin. 100% melanin means hair is fully black. Why? 0% means white hair. So we're keeping it around 67%. There's also melanin redness, which as the name suggests, adds a reddish tone to the hair. Also, there is this melanin randomizer, which assigns a random value to the hair across the surface. And finally, roughness and IOR, uh, which changes how the hair reflects light. The higher the IOR, the more reflective the hair will be. Now, okay, 
we have the material for the skin, we have the material for the hair. Now we need to add a material to the eyes. So the eyes consist of two different layers. There is iris and there is cornea and sclera. Cornea and sclera are one geometry. The iris is a separate geometry. So just like for the skin, we need another AI standard surface and we are adding the textures. There's two textures, one for the color of the iris and there is another texture for the displacement. So we add the color to both base color and the subsurface color. And the displacement, we need to add a displacement node. The displacement node is not specifically for R node. It's a it's a node that you use globally for different render engines. So let's add a displacement node and let's connect our displacement texture to the displacement node. But remember that displacement is a single channel node. So you need to click on the plus button next to alt color and connect one of those channels. Doesn't matter which one. I, I connect the red one. Okay, now for the cornea and the sclera, which is a single geometry, we need to add a layered material. So this layer consists of a material for cornea and a material for sclera, because these are two completely different types of materials. The cornea is a clear material, like like a very thin glass. But the sclera is just like a skin, it has subsurface. So let's go ahead and add a material for cornea. And for cornea, I am using a preset that Arnold has for glass. So I'm going to replace that preset with the current settings. Okay, now let's make a separate material for a sclera. For the sclera, we are using the same skin preset. Now, to connect these two materials to a single material, we need to add a eye layer shader, which is Arnold's layered material. Connect the sclera to input one, and connect cornea to input number two. Okay, now we need to tell which part of this geometry is cornea and which part is um, sclera. To do that, we need to add a mask. And for the mask, we're using ramp. And we connect that ramp, connect one channel to mix number two, which is cornea. Now to see exactly what the ramp is doing, I'm temporarily connecting it to the output of the material. The white area is cornea and the black area is sclera. Okay, now we have assigned the values to ramp. Let's connect the material to the output and let's see what the final shader looks like. Let's go ahead and import our displacement map and connect one of the channels to the displacement node.
So we can't kind of see the displacement, but we can see all the details. It's like the details are lost in the render. So to fix that, we need to make a couple of changes. In the attribute editor, in the Arnold section, changing the subdivision type to cat clock, we are adding two iterations. We can go further, but be careful, you might crash Arnold. Change the adaptive space to object. Change the UV smoothing to linear. Because we don't want it to smooth the UV. In the displacement attributes, keep the height to 1, the scale to 0. Also in auto bump, here's what makes the most noticeable change. You have to enable auto bump when you add a displacement to model your uh, finer details are going to get lost in the render. So we're going to compensate for that by enabling auto bump. So not only this displacement map changes the geometry itself, it also applies to the model as a bump map. Now, you can see that the details in the render are much more clear. So, okay, now that we are done with our materials, with our lighting, we are going to explore some of the Arnold render settings. I am changing the render device from CPU to GPU. NVIDIA sent me this amazing 3090 RTX card and it renders beautifully, it renders very fast and is much more efficient than CPU. In the Arnold renderer tab, the only one slider for camera or anti-aliasing. I'm going to crank it up to 10 in the filter menu. I am decreasing the width to 1.7. It makes the render a little sharper. Don't decrease it too low. Just keep it around 1.7, 1.8. In the advanced menu, auto bump in subsurface scattering. If you remember, we enable auto bump for model. So here, if you don't enable the settings, it doesn't fully utilize that option. Now, there is one more value that we change and it's rated. So rated is the number of bounces that lights could have in your render. I'm not increasing it too high because I have tested and it doesn't really, more than two or three, doesn't really make that much change, noticeable change. As you can see, compared to CPU, it's rendering much faster. You can also add in the plane behind the character. It helps with the lighting of that character. Also, we can see more clearly the shape of the hair. Now, we need to add some color variation to the hair as well, because we can't just leave the hair completely black, completely dark. To add that variation, we are using melanin map in the XGen window, go to preview, output. There is this section called custom shader parameters. Here I'm adding a color parameter. I'm calling it Melanie. I'm creating a map for this parameter. Unlike the other maps that we painted inside ZBrush, we are painting this one inside Maya. So, Now, remember, each time you want to paint a map inside Maya, you have to switch materials. 
You can't use a third party shader on your model. You have to assign a material like Lambert to your model. Otherwise you can paint. So now using a small radius for the brush, I adding these dots around the skull. So the entire surface is mostly white, which means 100% melanin. And these dark spots that we are adding represent white and gray hair. So, so now to add this parameter to the hair material, we are going to use a utility called AI user data color. If you search its name in the hyper shade, you can find AI user data color. So we need to send this node. We need to change that attribute name to the same attribute that we added in the custom parameter, which was millennium. And instead of connecting it directly to the hair material, I'm using a color correction node that's render. And as you can see, only one of the hair groups has color. Other, other hair groups are just pure white. So it's because we're using a single material for all the hair description, but we haven't added that custom parameter to other description. We have only added that parameter to the main hair description. So let's go ahead and so let's go ahead and add the same parameter to all the description. Also let's assign the same map in the hyper shape just like I showed you before you can assign a single map to more than one description. So now now let's add those white and gray hair areas to facial hair as well. Now here we have some gray and white hair strands, but the hair is mostly black. So to change the base melanin, we can, yeah, we can just, in the color correction that we added, we can multiply a gray color to the map. So instead of having 100% white, we're adding a percentage of gray to the map. You can also try changing contrast, try changing other parameters. Now here I'm making some changes to the lighting setup. I'm adding, I'm changing the position of the light and I'm also adding a second light. So there is one area light on top, and there is another area light which is which has less intensity in front of the character. So the render looks fine, but it doesn't look photorealistic. There are a couple of changes that we need to make. First one is that the face looks kind of emotionless. Because when they make life masks, 
muscles on the face are mostly relaxed. So we need to have some of that expression, some of that emotion added back to the model. So to do that, I'm going back to ZBrush and I am using one of the references to try and see if I can maybe add a smile, very gentle smile and also add some expression to the eyebrows. I'm selecting the model that I imported from ZBrush. Then I'm selecting the model that we already had. Then in the top bar menu, the deform menu, click on the box next to blend shape. I'm going to choose a name for that blend shape. And I have target shape option as check topology. So let's click create. It gives us this plane sheet. So there's another problem that I have with this render is that the skin color, it just looks too flat. It doesn't, the color variation is not enough. We need to, we need to add more variations to the color. So let's switch back to ZBrush. I am just trying to add more variations and more details to the Alvido map. Trying to add more vivid colors on the face, more reddish color around the ears, more color to the lips, more saturations to the cheekbones, to the nose trying to add a couple of more darker spots also. Okay, as you can see, the albedo map makes a big difference. Okay, I think it's looking much more lifelike. And okay, you can keep improving the model. You can keep improving the hairstyle. Keep working on the skin details. There's much more you can do. There's much more you can explore, but that's all that time allows for this video series. Keep learning, keep practicing, and good luck.